Hey guys, thanks for checking out another show on the Helix Experience podcast. I'm with my fiance, Steph, and today we're going to be talking about is mindset coaching bullshit? Thanks for jumping on, Steph. Always glad to be here. I love these episodes with my amazing, beautiful fiance. They are always super fun and we get heaps of good feedback. I'm just turning this heater off because it's fucking hot in here. You can tell it is in the doghouse. <laughs> well, I'm in the doghouse. I'm joking. I like the compliments. So the cost of the show today, guys, obviously free, but if you get one piece of value, a little nugget or something inspiring from the show, please share it to your story and make sure you tag me at Tim.Frey. My fiance doesn't need any more tags. So I'll take him. Yeah, she'll, That's definitely she'll take him as well. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we're going to kick this off today. What is mindset coaching? Uh, we'll start with Steph. What do you think or what's your uh, definition, according to Oxford Dictionary, of mindset coaching? I think that mindset coaching is bringing awareness to the position or the fixed position of your understanding of yourself, of society, of the people around you, because we all have a set way of viewing things, whether that's our belief systems, whether that's um, the stories we tell ourselves, whether that is, you know, the way that we see the world and the things that we believe to be true about the world. And that is your, literally your mindset. So your mind being your brain and set being to be fixed in one place. And so I really personally think that mindset is bringing awareness to why you are the way you are and how you can potentially change or adapt that to better get the outcomes that you want from life. Damn, mic drop. <laughs> that was just very Paul. Well, yeah. We, very yeah, Paul-esque. Very Paul-esque. So, yeah, there's a, a lot of ways to define mindset. I would say that it is, yeah, coaching of your conscious mind and your subconscious mind and your thoughts, actions, beliefs around that for the improvement of your life. Uh, I think the mind is the most powerful muscle or brain, uh, not muscle, most powerful aspect of your existence. And if you have a poor mindset or mind flex, I won't go into the difference between the two, that I think you're going to have a very hard life. Mm. So a couple of areas of, of mindset coaching for me is NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming, counseling and psychology being the third. That's just what I would – yeah, there are other areas of mindset which you could categorize, but those are the main three for me. Mm -hmm. uh, Steph and I have both studied NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. My definition of that is the psychology of success, so how to uh, help people create success with it. Neither of us practice, quote-unquote, NLP coaching in – it's rawest form in our practices, but we could, um, not that we do, but we have other experts that we refer to for that. So, you know, typically things that get worked on when you're talking about mindset is understanding your language patterns, whether they are positive or neg negative, understanding your limiting beliefs, which I'm going to go through each of these in depth in a minute, understanding your negative emotions, understanding everything um, that gets stored in your subconscious or conscious mind. So we'll go into language patterns first. I'll get Steph to dive into this. So, you know, some examples of language patterns that could be going on in your life, which could be negatively impacting you would be? Well, here's the thing with language patterns. I think one thing that people are probably not aware of and, and is that the fact that when your brain is telling you something like whether that's, you know, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry. Uh, you know, I need to do this. I need to get X amount of money. I need to get that promotion. I need to get that car. I want this. I need that. Whatever it is that your mind is telling you, your mind is telling you in language, right? It's using the power of words to give you the information that you need. When we think we think in words. And so it's really important to understand that, the words that you're using in your day-to-day -day life, the ones that are both verbal coming out of your mouth and the ones that are non-verbal just being said within your mind are actually dictating the way that you see the world and the way that you are living your life. And so words like I can't or, you know, I can't go to the gym, I, you know, can't find the time of the day, I can't, I can't start a business, I couldn't do that, I won't do that. Um, you know, those sorts of things are literally limiting you. You're creating your own glass ceiling because of course you can, you just one, don't know how, or two, can't be bothered. <laughs> um, and so of course there is a possibility for you, but you just haven't found a way yet. And so these kind of, you know, there are negative language. And I think there's a study that's been done that says that 80% of human thoughts are actually negative. 
And if you were to think of yourself, you know, every single time you had a negative thought, uh, scrunching up a piece of paper and throwing it into, into a basket, you know, I'm stupid, I can't do that, you know, um, I look fat, uh, you know, I'm a shit lifter, I'm tired, I can't be bothered, I, you know, whatever it is, like they're all negative thoughts. And if you just think about the fact that like that basket would be filling up so full while the positive one is so low. And so what I really think that language is about in mindset coaching is actually transitioning some more of that 80% over into our 20% basket. So taking more of that language, that negative language and actually turning into positive. So I can, it's just not a priority for me right now, Mm. you know? Yeah, sounds super woo woo. Just on that point, there um, there was a, a study or a scientific experiment where they had two apples in um, two different environments, and one of the environments they were saying positive, nice things to the apple. This sounds super weird. I understand that. And then the other environment, they were saying negative stuff like a couple times a day to it. The apple that was getting negative stuff said to it uh, every day deteriorated at a faster rate with the exact same conditions, and it was like quite astronomical. One was brown, and the other one was still kind of green. And the reason for that, guys, is because, like, we are all just energy, you know? We are all just cells, and every single one of us is made up of particles. And you can either have positively charged cells or you can have negatively charged cells, and that's it. Like, that's – and, and you know, so when you're talking to an apple, when you're talking to a plant, when you're talking to a person, when you're talking to yourself, you got to check in. Are you positively charging or negatively charging the cells in your body? Yeah. So our next point here is uh, limiting beliefs. So I'll dive into this one. So uh, – the subconscious mind, uh, or so there's two minds in your mind. There are subconscious and conscious. Your subconscious mind controls 97% of your thoughts, actions, and beliefs. Everything that's happened to you in your life is stored in your subconscious, whether you believe that or not. So a limiting belief is something that you have created at some point in your life because of something that has happened to you or something that has been said to you. So you know, let's take you back to an example here. If you were in school and you sucked at athletics, and you were just actually cack at athletics, couldn't run, couldn't jump, couldn't throw, couldn't do anything. And some kid said to you one day, you're just a really shit runner. Bang, that's been stored in your subconscious mind. Maybe someone said it to you, maybe a parent said it to you, something else has said that to you, and that's triggered and that's solidified in your subconscious mind. So when you become to a, an adult and someone says, let's go running, you automatically could say, actually, I'm just a really shit runner. And that's a limiting belief due to something that has happened to you in the past. It doesn't mean that's true forever, but for a lot of people, that is the truth forever because they have been told it a few times. Absolutely. And I think like with limiting beliefs, like obviously they're just beliefs, but these ones are limiting because they're actually stopping you from reaching your full human potential. So we all have belief systems that we're running with, whether you're religious, whether you believe in um, gay marriage, whether you believe in, you know, the ability to become an entrepreneur, whether you believe in that, you know, everything you put into your body, you know, is, is impacting the way that your body looks, whether you believe in the stomach being a second brain, like we all have different belief systems. When we're talking about limiting beliefs, we're talking about the belief systems that are stopping you from reaching your human potential, your fullest potential. So in the example that Tim just gave, you know, I actually, I I was the person who sucked at athletics at school. (laughs) 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 I was the person who sucked at athletics at school. And so growing up, you know, I was really nervous to join gyms and I was really nervous to, I definitely don't play team sports <laughs> because I have this belief system that I'm terrible at athletics, that, you know, I'm not a good mover, that I'm uncoordinated. I was always unco Steph. Like it was always something that was given to me. And so I have that belief system and it is something that I have to work through all the time. I put myself in new situations like the Helix camps <laughs> to mm. remind myself that I can, I might not be yet at the same level as other people. But if I work on it, if I made it a priority, absolutely I have the possibility to be able to do so. And so it's changing that belief from I can't to is this actually something that I want to work on? And if it is, then I need to create a new belief system around it. Otherwise, I never will. Yeah. So I've had the pleasure of coaching a shitload of people in the last 12 years. And as you can imagine, I've had a lot of limiting beliefs, especially around the gym. So a lot of people have this idea that, you know, maybe at some point someone said to them, you've got really bad flexibility or... Uh, you've got really bad cardio or you've got a really bad squat or you can't quite hip depth. And these things get solidified and locked in and they start thinking these things forever. So thoughts actually become things and they become their reality. And if you're telling someone you've got a really bad squat, then they're probably not going to push to the level that they need to because they automatically think they're bad at squatting and they're never going to be good at squatting. So a lot of times as an adult, you're just trying to undo the shit that, 
has happened to you in the past. So you're just going through and, you know, we're going to talk about trauma later, but we're going to undo a lot of the trauma. We're going to do undo a lot of the negative conditioning. We're going to undo a lot of the limiting beliefs that have happened to you. And if you're someone that's out there sitting and you're like, oh, I don't really have any limiting beliefs, check on yourself because you do. Everyone's had them. Some people have them to larger degrees than other, and they will be limiting your potential. Absolutely. Like it'll be things like I couldn't quit my job. Mm. It'll be things like I don't look that great. It could be things like... I'm not fast. Like every single person has a belief has a belief system that is negative about themselves. Mm. You just maybe haven't brought awareness to it yet. And this is the stuff that like that like Tim said, this is the stuff that gets worked on in mindset coaching. So really checking in those language patterns. A good mindset coach will basically hold a mirror up to you and every single time you say the language pattern that is unhelpful, they'll just draw your attention to it. And I think one a really cool example of that um is we were down south once and Tim was saying that I actually was being really negative and I was complaining a lot. And he said to me, basically held the mirror up to me and said, every single time you complain for the rest of the day, you have to do 10 burpees. And so we were down south at a winery and I complained many more times in that day. And Tim just held me really accountable to doing the burpees in my dress, in my high heels, uh, in car parks, at wineries and and all sorts of places. And by the end of the day, I realized just how much I'd been complaining. And I was so aware of it that every time I went to make a new complaint, I just kind of shut the heck up because I didn't want to do more burpees. So you kind of don't realize often how much you're doing it until someone holds the mirror up to you. And that's what a good mindset coach will do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you get when you date me. You do burpees in car parks at wineries. Yeah. I mean, no one else can date Tim now, but uh, <laughs> you're lucky. <laughs> I'm off the market. I'm sorry. I've had so much attention Ladies, in the last seven years. It's been, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wilson, calm down. Wilson. So we're going to go into uh, negative emotions. So emotion, um, what I like to think of emotions is like fear, hate, um, guilt, uh, happy, sad, like these types of emotions, they get stored at different degrees in your subconscious mind. So have you ever like, you know, been out with a friend and you've said something and they've completely fucking overreacted to it and you're like, why the fuck are they flipping out so badly over the minorest thing in the world? And it's because you've triggered something in them whether it be a negative emotion, something that's happened over and over and over and again, and they're just at that breaking point with that particular thing or that particular emotion where they just lose their fucking marbles. Mm, And that's where you'll see it with like people like road rage is usually a really good example of somebody who just got, it was super minor and they just got tipped over the edge and it was something that's been unaddressed because obviously someone cutting them off in a car park, like guys, not a big fucking deal. Mm. But because they've got so much stored anger, if you think of it like a pile of washing yeah. and you just keep adding a shirt to it, adding a shirt to it, every time they get angry, they're just storing this pile of washing until one day they flip out. Mm, they just lose their marbles. So, yeah, the, for me, like I did, I'll go into it and later on the show, but I did a bunch of mindset coaching and I had a lot of uh, guilt. I had a lot of fear. I had a lot of anger. All these types of things and like the smallest thing you could say to me and I would just flip my fucking marbles about it, Um, especially Steph would know that. And then once I released these things, it it wasn't an issue for me anymore or as Mm. much. Like it doesn't go away forever. It's like pruning a garden, you know, like you prune the garden back. Everything looks great. There's no weeds and then eventually it grows back like slowly and slowly and slowly. So it's something you need to maintain quite a lot. But you just need to have understanding and consciousness around these emotions. Like everyone has them. Everyone displays them in different uh, ways and characteristics and different intensities. But someone that, if that's you, that flips your lid easily, I would look into it because it's something that's going to negatively dictate your life potentially. Yeah, and those around you, I think that with negative emotions, like, I mean, when I first met Tim, I was a really angry person. I used to be really, I used to get really angry really quickly. And now I very rarely get angry. Like anger is just not a, it's just not an emotion that I wanted to feel. It's not a nice feeling to be angry at things. It's it, to have that level of stress within the body. It's not healthy. People are, don't like being around people who flip their lids. Mm. So if you're really wanting to, you know, become like a yogi and live your, you know, most harmonious, like calm, you know, really calm that nervous system, live a stress-free, happy life, like you have to address this shit. Mm. Yeah, I'd like Steph to share a story uh, with mindset coaching, especially as an entrepreneur like Steph is and I am as well. But like, it's very important to have a solid mindset because 
like your business is a dictation of your mindset and your mental strength in one way or another. Business is the ultimate sport. It's the ultimate mental sport. So generally, as a rule of thumb, the better the business, the better the business owner is mentally. So, you know, this is something that Steph explored a couple of years ago, and then I'll let her take the rest. I'm not going to cut her story. Well, look, it's such a big you know, like Steph's story with how mindset coaching has helped is is just so big because there's been so many phases and so many transitions of how it's helped me. But you know, from the negative the ne- negative speak to the you know limiting beliefs to the the way that I perceived others, the way that I was seeking approval constantly from other people and needing validation and not doing things because I was so scared of what people would think and you know relinquishing all of that stuff. But I think it actually came up really beautifully yesterday in a podcast I was doing with a friend who was also in business and she was saying that, you know, she's, she's only got into business the last year or so and even though she's quite a high-profile person, she just wasn't ready for entrepreneurship in the way that business basically makes you look in a mirror. And I like mm. to think of it in like if you think about looking in a mirror, like sitting on the floor naked, eating a cake, that's what it feels like when you look in the mirror, you know, in business, because you really have to see all of your flaws. It's really confronting because the mm. only thing that is stopping you from leveling up is the stories and the belief systems that you have and, and the things that you think that you're telling yourself you can or can't do. And uh, and basically one thing that I see really commonly with entrepreneurs and actually probably with anybody in life is money being the dictator of success. Mm. And a lot of people really um, losing themselves in the metric of measuring money as a success metric rather than like, I think that you and I could both agree money means nothing if you're not happy. And so the real success metric in life is happiness and peace, Mm. but and free time and free time totally. And, and freedom really to do what you want to do when you want to do it. But so many people get sucked into the trap of measuring success via money. And the trap there is that it will never make you happy. And that was something that I was having this discussion with a friend yesterday and and she was saying, you know, I just didn't know that. And she's like, you've been working your mindset for all these years. So you don't get, like me personally, I don't get trapped in that. Like, oh, I like must have more, need, need more. Mm. And like letting it, you know, sabotage my business or the desperation of overrunning my life. But if you haven't done the work, that is going to be what happens. The desperation for the money will actually drown you. Mm. Yeah, I love that point. I'm going to go into my story there. So I'm in the fitness industry and the fitness industry is very competitive. So I've heard many times that fitness industry is the most competitive industry in the world. Steph's seen this. It's like, it's quite tough to crack it in the fitness industry. Oh man. Like I feel so, uh, there's so many times I've been like, Tim, you should definitely not be in the fitness industry. Like let's do something else because it's so freaking hard. Yeah, it's tough. So my first couple of years, like anyone in the fitness industry, like you're full of piss and vinegar and, you know, you're just hitting it with passion and everything's just a hustle and a grind. And then you get to a certain point where, you know, your friends stop training with you and it turns into a real business. Like you, it's not cool anymore. Like you're not the cool startup that everyone loves and they're just trying to support and it's all free and cheap sessions and, you know, you're cutting deals and doing all this shit. And I hit that point probably in like 2015, 2016. And I realized that, man, I'm going to have to get some skills to do this thing. <laughs> you know, like this is more than just being a trainer and a coach. So being a good trainer is not good enough, unfortunately, in business. No, know? it's yeah. not. So this guy popped into my feed on Facebook was real old school at the time we used this thing called Facebook and uh his name pre-Instagram yeah pre-Instagram and uh his name is Paul Alicio and he was doing this thing called NLP and I was like this looks like fucking witchcraft and uh I applied because I want to learn witchcraft and uh I got on the phone to him and he was like this is going to be great for your business and typical me was like this is going to be great for my business here's my credit card details and I signed up (laughs) without knowing what NLP was and I practiced to become an NLP practitioner. A month later, I signed up to the, you know, the master's course and I did the master's course, flew to Adelaide. Uh, I had a month off, flew to Adelaide again, did a couple of rounds of it. And then all of a sudden I had all this education. I'd gone from basically being one of the most unaware people of all time, like had no idea about anything conscious. I thought the entire world revolved around me and my head <laughs> was the center of the universe. 
to thinking, holy fuck, I know nothing about anything and I don't know anything about anyone and no one does. And I'm a speck of dust in this atmosphere that we call Earth in this yeah. planetary solar system. Like, <laughs> Yeah, so then like, I was completely mind blown at this point. I just I went from, you know, like 20-something-year-old gym guy who was training. Full of ego as ego, well. Oh, my God, the ego. Yeah, just like thought, you know, the world was about me to realising I don't know fuck all. And I've got a lot to learn. So that was kind of like my intro into mindset and mindset coaching for that. So then I, I honed my skills and I, would, I thought to myself, I think I should probably get mindset coached by an actual coach. So that's when I signed up with a, a couple of mindset coaches, Karen and Taryn. Karen, I did my master's with Taryn. I did uh, my master's with also. Um, and they've coached me uh, numerous times each. And we went through these things like uh, limiting beliefs, negative emotions, language patterns, you know, success coaching, that kind of stuff. And I realized that, you know, like everyone does, I've got my hangups and I've got mental hangups, which is stopping me from being successful. A lot of them were around like my ability to get on a phone call and talk to someone was a hang up. I don't know what had happened in the past. Maybe someone was trying to fucking like, call me and get money out of me or some shit, but it's a was- pretty common thing in today's society though. Like people hate getting on phone calls. Like it's a, that's a very normal thing I feel. So that's, yeah, I don't know where it came from. Yeah. So that was one of them. The other one was like, I would hate asking for money. So asking, like having the money conversation with people, maybe because like I was been broke for my whole life. So money was something that felt like I didn't deserve it. Or I was like, you know, I couldn't have it or I couldn't store it. I couldn't do anything with money. So like asking someone to pay their invoice or that owed me money or those types of things were really hard for me. So worked on that. And then, I had a fear of speaking in in front of large crowds. And if you're a coach and you're scared of speaking in front of people, it's probably not the greatest thing, especially if you're a group training coach like I am. Mm. Like speaking in front of masses of people and acting confident is the fucking gig. Yeah. And without that, you're going to be fucked. Uh, and the fear of asking for money, like just think about it if you're in business. Mm kind of your job yeah you have <laughs> like, to so, ask for money like you can see how these stories tim and if you're calling people and yet in order to make sales you need to get be able to get on the phone um it, you know to be able to help a disgruntled client you need to be able to get on the phone to have a fear of asking for money when you run a business which is about making money like regardless of what anyone told you you can be fucking passionate about what you do but in order to run a business you need to be able to make money so you can pay your teams you can pay you can put food in your, your table to have a fear of speaking in front of large crowds as a group coaching coach you know is something that is massively going to hold you back in business so you can see how these fears and these doubts and these you know belief systems that tim was running were like absolutely holding him back mm. And then like I had this fear of being disliked and especially like posting my thoughts on social media. Like now a lot of people are like, oh, I can't believe you'd post that. And I'm like, dude, like there was a time where I wouldn't even post a photo of myself because I would be so scared of what people thought of me or my lifts or my failures or my personality or these. I wouldn't even post this stuff on social media because I was so scared of someone disliking me or unfollowing me. And now I couldn't give a fuck, which is incredible and just shows the journey. And then the last point, it's like, I know so many people can resonate with this, but like my body image, like I've, I've always been a gym guy and I look in the mirror and even now, like I look and I'm like, you're pretty small, dude. And like, I'm nearly, He's hardly small. Yeah, like I'm, I'm nearly a hundred kilos of man, nearly pushing a hundred kilos. And like, I still look in the mirror and I'm like, you're pretty small. could be bigger. could be jacked. It could be these types of things. And that, like, I went through a phase, especially in mindset coaching, where that's the only thing I would work on for multiple sessions is just like, how can I overcome my body image? And I'm sure Steph has seen like the evolution of these things and I'll just get her to give her a take on them. Yeah, it's been beautiful, Um, especially, I mean, I remember the fear of calling people that you had and I remember the first few times I heard you on the phone, we were living in our house in Dinella and it was awkward. <laughs> and it was, you had these scripts and it was so awkward, but you kept and you were shit at it. Like, guys, yeah. The first time you do stuff, you're going to fucking suck. Like the first page you write on a book is going to be the worst. The first blog you write, the first video you put up, the first podcast you record, like go back and listen to Tim's first ever podcast on this, like, like way back, like years ago, like it would be fucking terrible. Like, so bad. like, you know, you have to start somewhere and you're going to be shit when you start, but now you're a weapon. Like we were in Bali a couple of weeks ago and, you know, someone dropped in and was like, Hey, I'm thinking about, you know, joining Helix. And he gave him a call right on the spot, had a really beautiful, wholesome conversation with them and helped them to make a, you know, a buying decision that was right for them. And so it was, you know, beautiful to witness. I've seen this, especially the fear of being disliked and the, especially the fear of like showing up as you on social media. I've seen the evolution of that 
it's it's been really it's actually been quite recent um the full like the full circle of it you know of its of its journey completed in the last I'd say like eight months of the last eight months I've just seen you completely flourish like it's been like it's been so nice yeah it's been it's been an incredible journey it's literally taken me like six seven years yeah to kind of get to this point of like hard hustle. a lot of money a lot of money on mm. it yeah I um it's worked out well for business growth I think like you know the outcome of all these types of things is obviously happiness and we spoke about that before is like I'm so much happier like I don't have to worry about you know, what people think of me or this person said this, like, I actually don't give a fuck, which is a great place to be in. But, you know, the business growth has been great. I think like once, you know, all my friends dropped off and they stopped supporting me, I actually had to make this thing a real business. Like without fixing all this mindset shit, I'd still be a struggling coach in a tiny gym in some surf, in some Perth suburb. I heard this really cool quote yesterday from one of our mentors, Paul, and uh, he was like, you know, you think to go into entrepreneurship, the only, like the skills that you need would be like to be the coach, you know, yeah. or for me, like, you know, also being a coach, well, you know, the, if you're a, if you're a baker or you're a candle maker or whatever that you, all you need is the skill of that. Mm. But he was actually saying that if you want to make money in life, the number one skill you need is marketing, especially mm. if you're in business yeah. is marketing. That's the skill you got to learn. And marketing part of that is, you know, the language that you use, the uh, which is again is mindset. How you can how you can talk to people and connect with them on an emotional level. How you can get on the phone with somebody and have a conversation that helps them and that shows them that you care and what your point of difference is and all of this beautiful stuff. But to first, it's actually to to first get started. It's not just having the skill of being a coach. Like there are so many incredible people in the world. Like you're probably listening and you have skills. The people who are listening right now, you have skills. And you're probably fucking great at what you do. But in order to get other people to see those skills, that is the hardest part. To be able to get somebody to pay attention, to, to cut through the noise, that is the hardest part. And that's where the skills need to develop. And, and so much of that comes from the inner stories that we're telling ourselves as well. Mm-hmm. Couldn't agree more. So <clears throat> I'm sure it depends who you follow, but uh, there's a little, been a little bit of this uh dirty inspiring word called trauma Mm. and uh, a lot of people really get behind this trauma thing so in my opinion or my point of view trauma is like something that's happened to them in the past that's obviously terrible well most of the times it's terrible but people really hold on to it and use it to their advantage or disadvantage, whatever way we're looking at this. And I know Steph wanted to have a little play on this. And Yeah, look, I think that trauma is real. Like I think that trauma is a very real thing. And, you know, I, I come from a pretty traumatised family and, you know, our family's got Amen. this. <laughs> our family's got their stuff, right? And, um, and you know, while I personally haven't experienced really deep trauma, um, my mother has. And the thing that I think is what I'm seeing happening right now is there's a lot of focus on like sitting in and with the trauma, Mm. right? Sitting in it, like really like going back to those moments and sitting in them and feeling all the emotions and like really like focusing on going backwards, going backwards through time, going backwards to, to, to process it, going backwards, going backwards. And I think that in my education in my experience my understanding of you know um and it's a limited understanding i'm I'm fully aware of that but in my understanding of psychology of of neuro-linguistic programming of um you know the 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 school of thought around counseling is that really we want to be moving forward and i think that all human beings can relate to wanting to move forwards rather than move backwards and i'm not saying that we don't get to go back and bring awareness to when that decision was created. So for example, if you hate your body, at some point that was a decision that was made. At some point, maybe you got teased or somebody told you or whatever it was that created that belief system. There was a moment and it's, it is important. And NLP as the part of the practice is actually going back to that moment, but subjectively and viewing it as the adult that you are now, because most of it happened when you're a child usually, um, and going back to it as the adult you are now and looking at it and seeing clearly from an adult's perspective, from a real world third party perspective, the lessons and, and how that story was actually not true and how that story um, can now be used to 
become a positive moving forward aspect of your life. And so I do think there's a lot of trauma work going on at the moment, releasing a lot of trauma from the body. And I do think that, you know, things like kinesiology and some more of those energetic works are so important for moving energy through our cells. But I really believe, and I know that like Tony Robbins and a lot of those kind of, um, Uh, gurus, uh, they focus on positively charging the cells through current belief systems, current thoughts. So that's kind of my take on trauma. Yeah, I like it. So, you know, Steph, is mindset coaching bullshit? No. I think it's like, I think you need to be really cautious who you work with i've seen a lot of life coaches lately that have been like 20 years old and there's nothing wrong with that power to you babe but ultimately guys you want to be like and and there are different life coaches different things i just got my mom a life coach who specializes in childhood trauma because that's what my mom had and so it's really important that you find life coaches or um you know mindset coaches or mentors that are that specialize in the areas that you want to work on right mm. because there are people there are mindset coaches that specialize in you know business in there are counselors that that specialize in uh you know uh career like all sorts of different things so you want to make sure you're finding the right person um but absolutely will change your life yeah. So, you know, if you're going to get a life coach, get someone that's had life experience and that can guide you through it. If you want to grow your business, get someone who's grown a business. Mm. If you want to lose weight, don't take advice from fat people. Here he goes. I said it again. <laughs> and if you want to get strong, take advice from strong people. It's the same thing with mindset. If you're going to work with a mindset coach, work with someone that has a good mindset. Mm. Same with everything in life. So, Mindset coaching for me was one of the best investments I ever made. And Taryn and Karen are both incredible. It's, it's weird how similar their names are. I'm just looking at them on the piece of paper here. But yet how wildly different they are. Yeah, they, they were, they're both incredible, still are. And uh, I couldn't recommend them enough. Thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on this episode. Uh, Steph and I loved chatting to you about mindset coaching. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to DM me. Happy to help.